Greetings, uh, brothers and sisters. I come to you in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one true God of all creation and the Lord who made the worlds. Again, uh, this teaching that I'm giving uh, this afternoon is so very important. And uh, hopefully that you are prayerful and attentive as we search out the deep things of God. I'm praying and believing God that you will receive this message with gladness and with joy and with the humility of heart that you could put into practice the instruction that you receive from the prophet in the Lord's house and that you may uh, be recovered from the snare of the foul, if that be the case, or to graduate yourself to a higher level according to a higher calling that God has intended for you and your life. Now, I want to open up in uh, the book of Timothy and we have to establish a little foundation here according to uh, the direction in which I want to lead the church uh, this afternoon. Now, it's so important that we understand we can only go as far as the Word of God allows us. And I'm saying it in this capacity. If you are a minister called to do a work in the vineyard, then you have to allow yourself to grow according to how the Scripture is revealed to you by a teacher God has sent to you to raise you up to that level where you can be a truly, uh, I should say, a true defender of the faith. Now, you know, Jude wrote in his epistle, uh, verse 3, that you earnestly contend for the faith once delivered to the saints. Now, in 2 Timothy, if you take notice, in verse uh, 4 and 16, I'm in 2 Timothy 4 and 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for the doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in holiness. Now here we have to come to understanding the importance and the value of the Bible. Whenever you try to circumvent or add on or take away, matter of fact, let's connect right quick with the Revelation of 22nd chapter. I'm going to show first the importance of the Bible. This is the book that guides us in the pathway of righteousness, that we might one day find a resting place for our soul. In Revelation 22nd chapter, here uh, God is giving a warning to the church that you're not, to, you're not to compromise the Word. You're not to compromise the Bible. You're not to add on or take away from the Bible because it is the book that each soul needs to transcend them from a carnal being to a spiritual being in Christ Jesus. Now notice now, in the 22nd chapter, uh, verse 18, For I testify to every man to hear the words of this prophecy, of this book, the Bible, If any man shall add on unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. In other words, the uh, apostolic curses as you apply it today. Because you wanted to add on something that's not there. You wanted to tell the people about a Christmas that's not biblical. Tell the people about an Easter that's not biblical. Tell the people uh, about having an Easter egg hunt for the children. And the Bible says bring up a child in the way that should go. That when it is old will not depart from the faith. We have to understand you can't add things on simply because they are popular. This is not a book of popularity. And you hear me right now. This is a book right now, in this dispensation, the final dispensation, very unpopular. This Bible is so unpopular until right now they have programs and they have uh, various so-called scholars working overnight, day and night, trying to change the King James Version Bible. And why is the King James Version Bible so important? A study was done by the university, uh, University in Texas. In the 19, I believe 1970 or 71, memory serves me right, it's in the 70s, and proved that the King James Version Bible 
was the truest translation out of all your revised Bibles. So brothers and sisters, when I tell you to go to your Bible, I'm talking about the King James Version Bible, and in that Bible, you will not find a Christmas, Christmas tree, Easter, Easter egg, Easter egg hunt, sunrise surf. You won't find any of that. Santa Claus, all of that is a myth. It is based on heathen practices. And I want to, again, we're going to get into this in this teaching, the importance of understanding why there are certain rules and guidelines sent to the church. When you have a doctrine, and the foundation of the doctrine is based on truth of God's divine word as set forth again in the book. Now again, and not to add on, let's pick up verse 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the says of the holy city and the things which are written in this book. So the blessings that are for us in this earthly uh, journey, God said he will take those blessings away from anyone who will not follow his truth. And you can't follow his truth because without, uh, let me say it this way, if you follow God's truth, you can't be adding on or taking away because we can't lean to our own understanding in all that ways we must acknowledge him and he will direct our path. How does he direct our path? Through the real word that's recorded again in the Bible. All right, now I want you to take note in 1 Timothy 2 and 9. And I'm going in this direction because uh, often I get emails uh, explaining to me why uh, we can't wear makeup, why we can't paint our face, why we can't wear jewelry, earrings. Uh, well, brothers and sisters, the reason why you can't is because God said not to. Now, I really shouldn't have to elaborate or go into any detail, but I will for the sake of uh, maybe you have a spirit that uh, does not want to accept uh, guidance because you haven't been taught correctly. Whatever your spirit may be in the context of not wanting to accept uh, what thus saith the Lord in regards to moral conduct and moral statutes and the clothing statutes, we're going to go into that. And again, it's not about earrings, lipstick, short dresses, long dresses. It's about obedience to God's instruction. God from the beginning always had and always will have a separated church. Now when you are separated, you have to first understand that you can only be separated by the Word of God. The Word of God separates a people from within a people so that he can have a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Now in 1 Timothy 2 and 9, we're going into the dress code today and I'm going in this for a reason because there are many of you out there who claim to be Christians and I want you to listen to this teaching. This is critically important. I opened up and told you the Bible is our guideline to eternal life. I also shared with you in Revelation 22nd chapter, you can't add on and you can't take away. You can't add on a part that you think ought to be there, or you can't take out a part that you think ought not to be there. In other words, the Bible is not uh, for your own personal uh, acceptance. The Bible is for you to accept what thus saith the Lord without compromise, without adding, without taking away, or any such thing. Alright, in 1 Timothy 2 and 9, in like manner, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Now, adorn means to dress. So here, anytime a preacher tells you God don't have no dress code, or what, what, here's another phrase that they use. God looks at the heart and not the outward appearance. Well, now, if the heart is true to God, would not that heart be obedience in its outward adornment, in its outward activity? and it's a uh, visible lifestyle. If you obey God, God gives you a set of rules to follow to prove whether or not you're going to obey God. Now obedience uh, brings in the criteria of faith. Without faith it's impossible to please Him. He that comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them